Robert again. I want to welcome the Small Leadership Development Program participants. And we're happy to have you. If you all will stand up, tell us your name, where you work, and how long you've been with KEB. Uh, my name is Christy Altum. I am in the New Service Department, and I've been with KEB for 18 years. My name is Nathan Holt. I'm in Green Modernization. I've been with KEB just under 10 years. My name is Angela Lane. I'm in overhead construction, and I've been here 15 years. My name is Jeremy Loveday. I'm with Career Bond Organization, and I've been here about 10 years. I'm Oshawa Richards. I work in the accounting department, and I've been here for nine years. I'm Kevin Roberts. I work in station management service, the wire section, and I've been here 25 years. I'm Deanna Unger from the HR department, and I've been here four years. Well, welcome, and I wonder what you all did to have to come to this long board <laughs> meeting, but I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but welcome. Uh, we're going to uh, have the one call. Mr. Coley, could you uh, note that all the commissioners are present? So noted. Okay. And everyone should have received the minutes. If they are okay, if I can have a motion and a second. I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're going to move straight into the official acts to uh, resolution 1341, amending resolution 1329, which adapted uh, budget appropriations for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2016. Commissioners, uh, fortunately, because we have a long meeting, we have a very short board meeting, and we have one official action, and it's related to additional appropriations in the water division. I'll recognize Commissioners, good morning. Prior to your consideration of Resolution 1341 this morning, I did want to take just a few minutes and review for you KUV's budget performance for fiscal year 2016. Uh, before I begin, I just wanted to mention a couple of things. First, a few weeks ago, staff did meet with the Board's Audit and Finance Committee at the committee's March 23rd meeting, and among other things, we did review current year budget performance, including the need for additional budget appropriations for the Water Division. Second, uh, the numbers that we're going to see here in a few seconds um, for revenues and expenditures, I'll point out that that reflects nine months of actual performance and three months of forecasted data, sort of what we refer to internally as nine plus three numbers. And finally, um, if you like numbers and you like numbers early in the morning, I'd say you've come to the right place. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we'll go ahead and get, go ahead and get started. Um, Last May, the board adopted a total budget for KUV of $889 million, and that was combined for all four utility systems together. Our most recent forecast projects $853 million in cash expenditures for the year, which is $36 million, or 4% under budget. Um, as you might expect, and we talked a lot about this with the, the audit committee, the mild winter did have a significant impact on KUV's budget performance this year. Uh, the winter, as it turned out, was 18% warmer than normal, and that made it the second warmest winter in the last 40 years in Knoxville, and the fifth warmest in the last 100 years in Knoxville. So with statistics like that, you know it's going to have an impact on your budget, and it's also going to have an impact on customer bills, and it really brought good news for customer bills this year. For example, the average residential electric customer's winter bill was $42, or 6% less than expected, and $77 less than last year. For the average residential gas customer's winter bill, it was $58, or 12% less than expected than if it had been a normal winter, or a whopping $168 less than last year. Of course, last year we had a uh, slightly colder than normal winter, so you can see the impact on the difference there. But good news for our customers, but not quite such good news for our energy sales margins, as you would expect. Um, by the end of the year, we are projecting our gas sales margin to be $6 million <coughs> under budget, and our electric sales margin to be $1.4 million under budget. Electric benefited a little bit from a hotter than normal summer, but gas really, you know, that was a, a hit with the $6 million um, um, in margin deficiency. Some good news on uh, water and wastewater. After several consecutive years of water and wastewater sales revenues being under budget because of declining use, uh, this year we are projecting for both of them to be about 4% over budget. And 
though use is still declining somewhat, it's not at the same level, same trend as we've seen in the past, which is good news from a, a revenue perspective on that. Uh, other good news is on our O&M budget for the year, we are projecting to be $1.3 million under budget. That's primarily related to our full-time staffing levels being under budget, um, really, for most of the year, about 20 positions on average of that. And um, as is typically the case, we have timing issues that uh, often impact our capital spend during the course of the year. That's especially true for the electric system this year. Our multiple, multiple projects were impacted by timing, which really will move dollars uh, into next year's budget and beyond. For the water division, however, we actually accelerated a project, phase three of downtown Century 2, which had been in the plan for FY17. A portion of that has moved into this fiscal year as we try to get that work done as, you know, as soon as possible. But that did increase our water division capital expenditures this year above budget. And that's one of the primary reasons that we do need additional budget appropriations for the water division. Now we look at some specific numbers, and commissioners will point out that this chart does reflect the forecasted budget variance, and we do show it by utility system, and we also show it by cost <coughs> and component. I'll also point out that a parenthetical means that it is over budget. So looking at the cost <coughs> components first with energy cost, as you would expect, with less customer, less customer demand than uh, budget than we expected, our cost of purchases from TVA and from our gas suppliers are going to be down as well, and that is the case. Electric power costs, $13.7 million under budget. Our purchase gas cost, about $16 million under budget for the year. Uh, for O&M, as I mentioned, $1.3 million under budget. Again, really the three primary factors driving that one, and the biggest one is full-time staffing. We budgeted full-time staffing at an average level of 945 positions for FY16. Um, to date, we've been averaging about 925. So there's been some lag there in the hiring. A portion of that's related to the new HRIS system that went into effect that you heard about. That just caused a little bit of a delay in, in some hiring as well. So that's part of the reason for that. Um, also, labor-related, and this is good news, our workers' compensation claims for the year are $200,000 under budget. We think that is a reflection of our heightened focus on safety over the years and that injuries are becoming a little bit less severe over time. And Ms. Edwards will talk in more detail about that a little bit later uh, this morning. And another factor is our fuel cost. Uh, as energy prices have been falling over the course of the year, gasoline, diesel prices have been falling as well. So our fuel costs are projected to be $700,000 under budget. For you. So good news for O&M. For capital, in total, $6.5 million under budget. I'll speak to a couple of the systems. I mentioned electric. We are projected to be $9.5 million under budget in our electric division capital. Two things driving that. Timing issues on a host of various projects, both system-related and non-system-related, some facilities projects, some IT projects as well. That's mostly moving into the next year's budget. And, uh, but also, a big good news for that is $3 million of that variance is savings on um, various projects for the electric system. So, good news there. Mm -hmm. For the water division, $2.8 million over budget. We talked about downtown Century 2, that's $1.7 million of that variance. The other $1.1 million is some additional cost on the Cumberland Avenue Street State project. Bids came in higher than anticipated on water system improvements associated with the city's project. So that drives that variance and makes up the 2.8 million. For debt service, in total, $2.4 million over. And this was actually a, a, a variance that relates from a good thing. Um, at this time last year, we were anticipating selling $78 million in bonds and electric water and wastewater in about October and November of 2015. But uh, shortly after the budget was adopted last year, with the board's approval, we accelerated that sale to May of 2015 to take advantage of favorable interest rates. We were concerned that interest rates might be rising in the summer or the fall. So that was a good economic decision. It results in a negative budget variance, though, because we were, had budgeted only six months of principal and interest payments on that $78 million in this year's budget. Turns out we have 12 months of that. So just a timing issue. Uh, based upon a good economic decision. 
And then finally, um, tax equivalents, $548,000 under budget. That's really all in lieu of tax payments. And that's simply a function of the Knox County property tax equalization rate dropping after the budget was adopted last year. Uh, we budgeted 1.0 for that. It actually uh, was adjusted downward to 0.9634. So that is all of that uh, reason for that variance. So in total, $36 million under. You can see that electric, gas, and wastewater are all projected to come in under their approved budget appropriations. The water division is projected to be $3.7 million over. And there's, therefore, staff is requesting an additional $4 million in budget appropriations for the water division this fiscal year to be able to fully fund and cover the projected expenditures for the remainder of the year. I will point out that though this $3.7 million increase it's really just a, a timing issue when it's all said and done. Um, the increase in the Cumberland Avenue streetscape project, though that is an increase in cost, we are going to absorb that in other projects <coughs> over the course of the long range plan for the water system. So when it's all said and done, this is really going to be a wash or have zero effect on the long range water plan. Yes, sir. Is the reason why we need an additional allocation for water because each each of the utilities has to be budgeted separately. Yes, sir. You can't absorb it. Yes, sir. Good question. Okay. Each of the systems are distinct financial entities. They have their own budget appropriations. So, yes, sir. Mark, <coughs> will there yes, be sir. any increased revenue from the Cumberland Avenue improvements? Um, only to the extent that new businesses uh, would open there. And uh, we certainly hope, I think that was one of the purposes for the project as well. So the extent that that happens, and there's new buildings, new uh, commercial customers, new residential customers, and then, then that would uh, result in an increase for that. But we haven't budgeted anything for it yet. If, if it happens, that would be good. At this point, it's, a, it's an expense. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an expense. Commissioners, this next chart. Um, reflects also the expenditure variances that we just looked at, but it also includes variances for the system's revenues. So I'm going to go over that with you as well so we can see the projected net impact on each division's cash position as a result of budget performance this year. We'll start with electric. Again, as you would expect, sales revenues down $15.2 million, um, lower customer demand, of course. We already talked about energy costs being down 13.7. The difference is our sales margin, so electric is $1.4 million less than expected. One thing helping electric on the other revenues is a $900,000 increase in other revenue. That's primarily related to last July we increased service connection fees. It was the first time we had adjusted those in over 25 years, and they weren't reflecting our cost of providing that service, so we did increase them. That's the big driver of that increase in other revenue. And then expenditures, this is everything but power costs, uh, down 8.8 .8 million, <coughs> that is the capital that we essentially talked about on electric division. The net cash impact of all the budget activity on electric division is a gain of 8.2 million. But I'll point out that about 6.5 million of that is timing on capital that's moving into next fiscal year or beyond. So it's not like it's 8.2 million we get it's all good for the electric division. It's probably about two million when it's all set. For gas on sales revenues, twenty-two million dollars under budget. Energy cost was sixteen million under. Translates to a six million dollar decrease in margin for gas. Other revenues up three million dollars. That is related to contributions in aid of construction for some capital projects related to large customers, which was more than expected. Now there's an increase in capital associated with that as well that just somewhat mitigates that. But that was an increase in other revenue for the gas division. The net impact on cash for gas is a $2.3 million decrease. Uh, good news for water, as we talked about, uh, $1.3 million over budget and revenue, which is a good thing. and something we haven't seen in quite a while. And again, basically across all water customer classes, use greater than expected. We also had about, I think, 100 more customers added to the water system than what we planned for in the budget, and that was all residential. So not, not a big source of revenue, but we'll take it. Um, 
on water, the other big news, of course, is the 3.7 million increase in expenditures. The net impact is a $2.2 million decrease in water division cash for the year. And on wastewater, good news also, 2.3 million. That's about 4% over budget. You would expect if we build water sales or more than expected, it's going to have an impact on wastewater as well. And that's what we're seeing. Obviously, the cost of wastewater service is higher, so it's going to have a bigger impact on revenue. And then, really, it comes down almost to the bottom line, a $2.6 million increase to wastewater division cash as a result of budget performance for the year. And that should be something good going forward that wastewater gets to keep the needs. Um, and in total, $6.3 million. Any questions on that? Yes, sir. Mark, forgive me if these are elementary questions. This is my first uh, budget here. Um, in our business, when revenue goes down, we try to manage expenses by, in, in large part, supplies, uh, reducing the number of supplies uh, by managing hourly workers, flexing down hourly workers, uh, and holding off on, on uh, hiring people. Uh, your primary, you seem to be making up your primary losses in revenue by lower energy costs, but there's still a gap. And that's just a flow through. Yeah, Basically. so what, what kind of tools do we have uh, in our, what kind of arrows do we have in our quiver to manage to the revenue? Um, for example, let's take the gas sales margin. It's going to be down $6 million compared to last year. Um, we look across the course of our long-range plan. You know, when it's all said and done for gas division, let's say, for example, we'll take this number. That's $2.4 million less cash than we thought we would have at the beginning of the year. So when we look of course, over the course of our long-range plan, we're looking to offset that in some way through managing costs, through managing our capital projects, uh, through maybe using some contingency dollars that we have reserved for the gas system capital. There's going to be something that's going to be used to absorb that to keep our long-range and, and often we have some degree of flexibility in our plans commissioner that helps us absorb that. Mm -hmm. And that's what we look for. It's going to be cost management. It's going to be in O&M and capital primarily that we'll look at the cost of that. And one thing we'll talk about a little bit later this morning is cost management of what we've done over the years. And as I mentioned on water and wastewater, you know, a lot of that has helped offset um, water and wastewater sales revenues that have consistently fallen short of budget levels over the last five, ten years. So we don't have that problem this year, which is good. Any other questions on that? Okay, commissioners, in closing, resolution 1341 has been prepared, which authorizes an additional $4 million in budget appropriations for the water division, increasing the water division's budget from 67 million to 71 million for the year, and it will allow us to cover um, the projected expenditures over the course of the remainder of this fiscal year for the water division. But again, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, that increase in spending, that impact on water division, part of it's offset by sales revenues being higher. The other, we will look to some of its timing, and what's not timing, we'll look to absorb and make up in the rest of our water long range plan. So it will not have any impact on future debt issues our future rate increases. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. If there's any more questions, uh, I want to request a motion and a second for resolution 1341 on first and final reading. Move. Second. Is there anyone who wants to speak on this? Uh, Mr. Coley, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Askew. Aye. Commissioner Hamilton. Aye. Commissioner Herbert. Aye. Commissioner Pinnell. Aye. Commissioner Thompson? Aye. Commissioner Williams? Aye. Commissioner Warden? Aye. Resolution 1341 is passed unanimously. Okay, um, is there any other business from the commissioners? I don't think we have anyone who wants to speak. Um, so the meeting is adjourned and we're going to begin the financial workshop. Thank you very much.